What's up guys, Alvaro here and today I want to show you the relation between the turbulence and the scale inside the wind force. For this I created this system that it's emitting particles, it have no speed, it's just emitting particles and the wind is blowing that way and all the particles have no X position. All the X positions are set to zero with this data operator so we can work in a 2D way and it's spawning particles uh, so we can uh, see a trail of those particles here and it's better to see the path that these particles get. So uh, the scene is don't, uh, you can download the scene on the description of this video so I'm not gonna show you everything that's going on here. But let's see. Now, the particles are going in, in this direction because of this wind operator. We have this drag force here as well, but it's all set to zero, so it's kind of no. And let's put some turbulence here. First of all, let's just um, see that this scale have no force at all without the turbulence. So let's keep this scale at one, like the default parameters and make this turbulence one. Now we can see what's going on a little better. So the particles are going this way and this scale, the relation between the scale and the turbulence is if we get higher scale, we get like crazier results with the turbulence, it's get like stronger. And if it's, if we got like lower values, the turbulence gets smoother but even if we get like very low values, it's hard to see the results here. So let's bring this strength down here on the force. And now you can see it a bit better. So with this low 0 0.01 value here, we can see that's very smoother. With one, it's very crazy. And to see it even better, I have this uh, drag here. It's already applied here in my force, the wind and the drag. And let's make it 100 in all axes. So let's make it very strong. So now you can see. With these parameters here inside the wind, turbulence one and scale one, we have like this much turbulence with this scale. So let's make the scale smaller. So you can see now that it gets very smooth. And if we put this turbulence higher, like two, you get more turbulence. And to see it working better, it's you can put like a smaller value here so it gets a bit smoother and you start getting some cool patterns like with this curly stuff here and if we put like real high values like turbulence it starts working weirdly if you bring it very high like 10 or 50 as you can see here. So if you got like some high values, like five or even 10, you can decrease this value here to 0 0.01. So it gets smoother and you got bigger curves. And if you bring it even down, it's gonna be like only like a giant curl, curling effect. So, I think a good relation between these is uh, if you got some big values, high values here on turbulence, you should put some very low values on scale. So, let's see here. If I have one and one, it gets this kind of electric effect. So, I can bring it down to 0 0.5 and it starts getting smoother and I can get it like even down and it starts getting this way and I can decrease this a little bit like 0.5 I really like the results like this 
you can see the wind blowing that way and all the particles kind of follow its own path but it doesn't cross the other, particle, other particles path so I think it's a very cool effect and the relation between frequency it's get it's just gets the turbulence just a bit crazier so particles start getting crazy with low values if you put like one it's it's madness so I like to keep it down just if I want crazy values so I think that's the relation between wind and the turbulence and the scale and I, I always had this doubt, so I hope it helps. I, I think it can help a lot of people just to understand it a bit better. And that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>